Question number two. Joanne Hayes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Finance. What Order. step? Order. Joanne Hayes. Thank you. My question is to the Minister of Finance. What steps is the government taking in Budget 2016 to deliver better public services, particularly for the most vulnerable New Zealanders? Order. Order. There is simply too much interjection coming from one quarter to my left. I'll deal with it if I have to. The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, the member will just have to wait till tomorrow for details. But the government is, uh, in Budget 2016, investing in a growing economy that delivers more jobs and higher wages, and one which delivers sufficient revenue to give us the choices. Uh, where we do spend money, uh, we will be focused on getting better value for money, uh, where we can make a real difference to the most vulnerable New Zealanders, uh, rather than just increasing the amount of funding. Supplementary question, Joanne Hayes. How will Budget 2016 continue to build the government's investments in health, education and other core public services? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, it will uh, build on uh, a lot of good work in health and education and other public, core public services uh, by focusing on getting more outcomes, not just spending more money. As we saw a decade ago, it's possible to spend more in health and deliver less health services. It's possible to increase government spending by 50 per cent in five years, only to see social statistics go backwards. Uh, we saw that happen under the previous Labor government. It's not happening under this government. Order. Supplementary question, Joanne Hayes. Thank you. What initiatives has the government announced particularly relating to supporting more vulnerable families into accommodation? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, it's important to understand that any initiatives come on top of $2 billion that is spent this year, this financial year, over $2 billion to support 300,000 people on the accommodation supplement and 60,000 households on income-related rent. Uh, and that's, on, that's uh, in addition to the government's $20 billion worth of houses, where it owns one in every 16 houses in New Zealand. Uh, so, Mr Speaker, there's already been announcements, a $41 million commitment to support around 3,000 emergency housing places. Uh, and the government's Home Start program, which has supported 12,000 people into first homes. Supplementary question, Joanne Hayes. What other steps is the government taking to get more houses where they are most needed? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, the government can take, uh, is taking a number of steps which I'll outline, but no land becomes available or infrastructure relevant to that land or house built without the Auckland City Council agreeing to every single step. There's something of a misunderstanding that government can somehow bypass the council and local communities. It can't. It has to follow the process. Order. So it's in the process of building 7,500 houses in Tamaki, 3,500 houses in Hobsonville, 1,000 houses in other Auckland locations, 300 houses in Weymouth, in addition to almost a 1,000 houses that will be delivered in Christchurch under the Housing Accord. Question number three, 